Hello and welcome to your weekly video forecast for the week beginning the 22nd of September 2014. The trick this week is to allow yourself to go into the crucible without necessarily falling into the fire. The crucible, the boiling pot, the melting pot, um, brings great transformation, profound growth. If you want to come out the other side stronger, you've got to go in and go into some pretty deep places this week. And I'm not saying that to frighten you, I'm saying that to prepare you and strengthen you for the journey. And you have to confront it in your strength, and you have to confront yourself with honesty, and you may have to confront some challenges and some opposition from another, but you can do it. You have the strength within you, but the trick is to not let things get blown out of proportion. And why is that? Because we start this week with a tense alignment between Mars and Neptune. It's been building, you know, for a good week, week and a half in terms of the intensity of it. And let's talk a little more in depth about this alignment. Mars, just recently in Sagittarius, is in a section of Sagittarius that is called the Nakshatra or lunar mansion of Anuradha. Anuradha is capable of immense um, devotion and immense passion. With Mars there, Mars is a pretty active and somewhat aggressive planet, so passions can run high. But the lesson of Anuradha is always about striking a balance, finding that balance between self and other when you're involved in a connection with another or when you're involved in a dialogue with another, right? So the idea here is to not let those passions get too out of control. Neptune, Neptune in Pisces, is in a section of the sky that's called Shatabisha. Now, Shatabisha is ruled by the deity Varuna, which is the Vedic equivalent of Neptune. So Neptune is right at home in this section of the sky. And Shatabisha's purpose is to obscure things, make things seem one way, sometimes to bring a drama on or a calamity on, a crisis in order to lure you in so that a transformation happens and something deeper is revealed to you, right? But the trick is to not go so deeply into that that you lose your awareness of the, um, the gift that's within the moment. So in other words, don't get so sucked into the drama that you kind of get off balance and perhaps miss the, uh, the meaning of the moment. The meaning of the moment will ultimately come to you, but I guess what I'm trying to say is you don't have to necessarily get knocked off balance, right? So don't get drawn into the drama. As soon as you sense the drama, look for the deeper meaning behind it. Look how you can um, maintain a balance and strike a dedication both to yourself and to a process that you're involved in with another. Pluto this week stations direct. The sun enters Libra. It's about balancing out. And we're going to go a little more in depth with that because we're also heading towards the equinox, the autumnal equinox, which will coincide with the Libra new moon. That's pretty powerful, Libra being all about balance. And the equinox, the time when uh, night and day are equal, is also a balancing point in the year. So that's pretty powerful symbolism uh, for, for what's going on. Pluto, let's touch on Pluto. Pluto couple of different meanings with what's going on for Pluto. Pluto is in Capricorn. So one of the things that's associated with that is that a lot of power issues can come to the surface, right? And regarding what we were talking about before with Mars and Neptune, there's the need to speak your truth, but not necessarily assert your power, but at the same time, don't give too much of your power away. It's a very delicate balance to be struck. But you've also got Mercury entering Scorpio this week. So that's, that's a very, um, that's very, it's very key that the truth be spoken, that everybody is honest and puts things out on the table when you're, when you're dealing with others. Um, for lack of a better way to put it, it's, it's like the gloves are coming off. But just because the gloves are coming off, it doesn't necessarily have to be harsh. Okay. So Mercury this week is also in Chitra. Chitra about um, honoring yourself, your path, what you're put here for. 
your truth, right? And Mercury will be forming a harmonious environment with Jupiter, which is in Leo, and a section of Leo that's called Ashlesha. Ashlesha is related to serpent energy. Um, symbolism of serpents, sloughing of skin, so definitely uh, changes are due, transformation is due. Um, and this is part of the process that's going on this week, right? Serpents are also about wisdom, so we use our wisdom to not make the same mistakes again. In addition to that, serpents are about potential power, and they also have the tendency to strike in an unexpected manner. So if something happens out of the blue, right, um, or if things get you know, just a little too you know, um, out of control in a specific situation, I mean in, in a certain way, in other words, verbal lashing out and then interaction with another, understand how that might be something that's a precursor to positive change rather than letting it turn into something that, that's negative. Um, in terms of your interactions with others, and sure there are other things other than interactions with others this week, but um, there is the potential for conflict to be uh, somewhat um, heated this week, right? And brought to the surface. So in relation to that, um, definitely be honest both with the other and with yourself, speak your truth, but allow space for the other person to speak their truth as well. Um, we've also got a week where a, an alignment that has been building for quite some time becomes exact. And it's gonna be lingering for, for quite a while because Jupiter is a rather slow moving planet, as is Uranus, and they're forming a harmonious angle called a trine. And if you remember, Jupiter is in Ashlesha this week. Um, and Ashlesha is related to, again, serpents, and sometimes the unexpected. Uranus is also related to the unexpected. And Uranus is in brevity. Brevity is that moment in between phases where the new has not yet begun, but the old has reached a state of completion. What these are saying on a certain level is trusting in your inner strength, trusting in who you are, walking your own path, knowing that you have the strength to make it through perhaps some rather difficult changes, right? Um, this new moon that's happening this week will be in the lunar mansion of Hosta. And Hosta is symbolized by a hand, right? So two things that are associated with the hand. Let's, let's symbolize it by this, right? When you're wanting to ward something off, we put a hand forward, okay? So there's a certain level of resistance that's there. But the hand is also about the manifestation. It's about the making things. And you can make a new life for yourself this week and begin to set a lot of things in motion that have a positive impact that reaches far into the future. And we're heading towards an eclipse season um, beginning on the 8th of October. So it's a good time to prepare for that. It's a good time to sow the seeds of the newness that you want in your life. Because again, um, and I touched on this in the, um, October monthly horoscopes, if you want to watch those. The, um, the uh, lunar eclipse that happens on the 8th coincides and forms part of a grand trine, and that's pretty powerful energy. But back to the week at hand. We're tilling the ground for some rather profound changes, which are gonna begin to start to come to fruition about the time of the full moon. The new moon is always about planting seeds. The full moon is always about reaping the harvest of those seeds. And in order to plant those seeds right now, there needs to be truth um, in all matters, truth with yourself, truth with another, um, go into the depths of your heart, understand who you are, uh, where perhaps you've been hiding from yourself, don't hide from yourself anymore, where perhaps you've been giving a little too much of your power away, it's time to begin reclaiming that power back. And it's time for some very deep changes to begin to be initiated. This week, it's all about the truth. It's about uh, confronting the drama and deciding, hey, you know what? I can resist this. I don't have to you know, give into this calamity. I don't have to get knocked off balance. I can still stay steady in who I am. And I don't have to let myself get so upset. When things are foggy, it's time to clarify in no uncertain terms, right? But just because you're clarifying in no uncertain terms, it doesn't mean that things necessarily have to be healed. I'm saying that as a warning because this week the potential is for those things to become healed. And that's been hanging around for a while. 
and it's all beginning to resolve. But sometimes there has to be that concept of confronting the resistance um, so that we can overcome and so that we can burst free of the framework. If a, uh, if a caterpillar just stayed in a cocoon, it would never become a butterfly. So you have to break free of that cocoon. And sometimes there's a resistance. And any resistance you're experiencing outside of another individual, try to see where that might be being mirrored on an internal level. You can always change it on an internal level. And it's quite miraculous when you do that many times, how quickly that external resistance tends to just fall away. That's going to do it for your weekly video forecast for this week. Um, I'd like to point out that I do offer a vast range of astrological services. If you'd like to know more about what this week's astrology means for you personally, I offer uh, personal consultations that are conducted via web conference or by telephone. The web conference option is a little bit better because it enables us to interact um, over your chart while I'm sharing your chart with you. It all gets recorded as a video. In addition to that, I also offer in-depth personalized video reports, which is just me doing a monologue with uh, your chart and saving that as a video for you. Additionally, there are also written reports which are offered on the, on the site. Um, all of those are available to you by clicking on the link above. If you've uh, shut down that link already, there's also a link further down the page. And please do subscribe to the page because you'll get updates every time I post a new video. I do the weekly um, videos once a week. I also do Vedic astrology classes, which are absolutely free to you. Um, in addition to that, I also offer monthly horoscopes. And when there's time for other videos, I tend to offer um, an occasional video on specific aspects that are approaching. Again, that's going to do it for your weekly forecast for this week. Until next week, please do take care.